Uh, this afternoon, uh, I want to welcome uh, filmmaker uh, Vijakumar Mirshandani. He's currently based in New York. Uh, I want to welcome him and thank him for taking uh, the time to discuss with us filmmaking uh, currently, you know, uh, today is the 6th of July. Uh, good afternoon from Egypt. Uh, hi, Sharif. Thank you for having me on this conversation. Um, it's a lovely day here in New York City. But uh, as you know, the situation around the world is not the best. But let's see how it goes. And we are riding it every day. Yes, we, I hope so. Of course, um, uh, I will share with, uh, in our discussion uh, uh, your uh, Vimeo uh, link. And uh, of course, I've seen you have been working um, as a documentary filmmaker, as a, a short filmmaker, and also you had some background working in television in a very renowned channel we know here in the Middle East, like Horra and uh, Jazeera. But uh, let me uh, ask you very fast about your, your journey, uh, you know, from your home uh, city, you know, until you studied and you know, started to work, you know, worldwide? Uh, well, Sharif, it's been a long journey. I would say it's almost more than two decades now that I've been living overseas from the home country I was born in. Uh, so I was born in Mumbai City in India. And as you know, that Mumbai City is uh, so-called the name given by the world as Bollywood. So I grew up in that environment. Uh, most of my friends and my colleagues around where I used to live were all involved in the Bollywood industry in some way or the other as producers or directors or sons or actors. So it all just happened by default that I also got into the same field of uh, interest. Although I did my engineering as my qualification, but you know, your passion drives you more than what your mind wants you to do. So yes. my heart was in always in creating content. And so I joined television industry way back uh, in 1995. So yes. I used to specialize as a director in sports. I used to cover live sporting action. That's where I started my career from. Yes. So that sports led me to different kinds of genres. I did news for CNBC and I moved, I got an opportunity to work with Arab radio and television in the Middle East. So I was based in Dubai for a while. And then I moved to Italy where we had the earth station where uh, ART channels used to broadcast. So I got the opportunity to work with um, Sheikh Salah Kamel and the other renowned people uh, yeah. from Egypt as well. So I did, did a little bit of stint in Egypt as well. I was there in, in uh, ART, Egypt office for a while. I used to travel to Lebanon. So I've been very well familiar with the Middle East uh, market. And as I used to specialize in working with ART, so my, my forte was as the promotions and creative uh, person for ART. Uh, then as you know, every um, industry or every channel gets you to a better look. So I moved on from ART. I moved to Malaysia, where I got married, so I settled in Malaysia for a while. Uh, while I was working there, I tried to work with Al Jazeera because Al Jazeera had opened a new center in Kuala Lumpur. So I was thinking of kind of, you know, working with them in their uh, east part of the world. But um, knowing my background, Al Jazeera was um, setting up an Al Jazeera documentary channel in Qatar. And they said, you know what, since your extensive background is great, they invited me to work with Al Jazeera documentary in Doha. So again, I moved back from the Middle East to Malaysia, again back to the Middle East. So I did spend a good number of years with Al Jazeera Documentary Channel. It was launching, so I was the promotions uh, director. But while I was working with Al Jazeera Documentary, I got exposed to documentaries. And that's where I found that I had a calling to tell stories in long format. And that was the turning point of my life from television as in creative promotions marketing and directing to shows into documentary filmmaking. So I would uh, give Al Jazeera documentary a, a big thank you for letting me find myself. And I made a small short film in Qatar on autistic children. And that is where I found myself as a documentary filmmaker. And I moved to Australia to pursue my career as a filmmaker. And that's where I did my filmmaking course in Sydney. And I made a documentary in, in Australia, which did pretty well. So the journey of filmmaking started from there. I moved to China, now I'm in the United States in the last eight years, making documentaries. And while you're doing documentaries, I did meet a lot of interesting uh, people uh, as filmmakers, as you know, when we attend film festivals and that's the best time to network. So I did get a good network in the United States with a couple of good filmmakers and collaborated to make short films. And currently 
I do a mix of everything. I make short films, documentaries. I did a couple of fashion videos. So everything is happening. And right now my films are in the festival. So I think it's been a great journey. Yes. And um, uh, right now when um, uh, I want to know, uh, generally speaking, uh, how do you find inspiration for your subjects? So, um, actually, my forte lies in social and social impact stories. Whenever I hear or whenever I read something or some information crosses my eye through a magazine or a film or a book mm -hmm. or an article, I get too connected with stories where people are making a difference. Because I like to understand human angle. I like to make stories which people are doing, but it's not been heard outside. Like there are so many humanitarian uh, subjects that are in the world where people are doing small things and making a difference. But those small things are never heard. So I feel that if these people can contribute so much to society, to mankind by doing their jobs or by committing themselves to any kind of act, the least I can do is get that story out. So I contribute to those stories through my creative passion of storytelling and making a story out of it. So by default, all these social impact stories come up to me. I don't know how. I either read it or somebody just comes up and says, hey, you know, this is a story I read about and I get attracted to it. So if you see my background of the films I've done, 80% of them are all social impact video stories. Autism, homelessness, domestic violence, all these kind of stories just come up to me. Even if I do short films, I focus mostly on films which have got a meaning or which have got a message. So I've done on women's empowerment. I did a film on coronavirus very recently. I'm working on another film on Black Lives Matter. So there are sub subjects like these which come to me and I kind of have a keen interest on those. Yes. Uh, be before we talked about this, these two live films, you know, about Corona and Black Lives Matter, because uh, these are hot subjects right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell me... Um, being around the world, uh, you know, you, you've been like uh, exposed to different people, different culture from in the five continents, let's say. But uh, how did you receive this uh, knowledge of uh, COVID, you know, as a, as a filmmaker? And of course, as with your uh, bro uh, background in broadcast, you know, and also as a human being with a family, how did you receive it? How did you conceptualize it? So, you know, COVID kind of started towards the end of 2019, I would say December or January, when it really took a big uh, toll into the world and started expanding and, you know, reaching out to different parts and people started getting more inf infected. So, of course, the wave was supposed to come to the West where we are right now in New York side or America side. It was supposed to come. And obviously, you know, like I live in a very uh, populated city. I was born in Bombay. And you know Egypt as well. So populated cities are definitely going to get impacted very badly because of the geographical and demographic situation. So I was definitely expecting New York to have the same kind of an issue because it's got such high population. It's got density quarreled together. It's got so many immigrants. So uh, this is the story which was definitely going to happen. But it was when can it happen and how it can happen? How would you try to tell the story? So I knew that coronavirus does not happen every day. It is a once in a lifetime kind of phenomena, which is a story which should be talked from generations to generations. So there has to be some kind of a story that could be created. But I did not want to create a story on what to do in the virus, like wear your mask or these are things which the government is doing anyways. You would, I wanted to try to address an issue which was not seen, but there was an underlying issue which people kind of brush it under the carpet. So like, the simple example was the virus was given a brand called Chinese virus. And it suddenly got shaming to people who belong to that community. Now, you cannot generalize that anybody who looks from that part of the world is the virus carrier. So people in this side of the world or many other places started shaming that community. And America did feel the brunt of it starting from the West Coast. 
So we thought with my team that, you know, why don't we create a story on coronavirus, which is the main platform, but the underlying issue has to be brought about. So we sat and thought of this concept, which needed to be told to people. And that was about how the Asian Americans were getting impacted because of the virus. So the film that we made does touch on the points of what the virus you need to do as a social responsibility, but it also plays the underlying current below seeing how one particular community was getting sidelined or was getting focused as being the discriminatory part. So, you know, like films are a storytelling process. You could tell any kind of a story. You could, you could say whatever you want to say, however you want to say. But we had a main objective of trying to address that issue because key point is I'm also from an immigrant from a different part of the world. I have faced some part of racism or some part of discrimination across the world because I've lived in different parts of the world. You like it, you don't like it. There's always certain amount of underlying pressure immigrants have in the country that they don't belong to. So I took it like I have faced it sometime in the Middle East or in Australia, as a matter of fact, as well. So it's not that racism does not exist. It does exist. So considering myself to be a part of the person who had felt it, I was attached to the story of making it and raising a point through the coronavirus film. So there it was, and it, it did pretty well. We already have a festival done last month when it was uh, released. Now we're looking at the festival circuit. So to answer your point, COVID did have a lot of impact in different, different aspects. Medical, society, employment, a lot of things impacted. So you could make a story on any facet of coronavirus that you want to. Yes. And... Um... Uh, tell us a little bit about the film you made it during this quarantine. So, uh, uh, Sharif, for me, I have worked on two sides of the business. I worked behind the scenes as, in, as a channel person where you buy content or you acquire content or you commission content. So you know what content is required for the audiences. On the flip side, I'm also a filmmaker, so I create content. So having knowledge of both sides, I knew that this kind of content would be sought by many people or many networks. So it was a very good subject to address. Uh, I had worked previously with a filmmaker, a friend of mine on a short film, and he came and told me that, Vijay, how about making a film on coronavirus? And this is the subject. I said, it sounds great. I'm keen. Let's do it. So that is how the concept came in front of me. And we, I knew that if the subject matter is dealing with the epicenter of where the virus was at that moment where Times Square was being very highly impacted, the film had to be shot in Times Square. With the lockdown coming in, we had very limited time. So I went to Times Square and I spoke to the police authorities over there to understand when they were officially going to announce that lockdown. Now in the United States, or I would say in New York, it was not a lockdown, but it was called shelter in place, to, to be technically correct. So they were going to start the shelter in place on 21st of March. So I told my team, whatever happens, the film has to be shot before 21st of March, because after that, we will not be able to shoot because of social distancing and all the technical reasons. So we shot the film on 21st of March before the shelter in place could be impacted. So of course, during the preparation work, we had to get star cast. We had to get a lot of people involved. But after the crew signed up, as we progressed closer to 21st of March, the pressure started building up and many of our crew members started refusing to come because of the social distancing and the problems of infection that was arising. So having said that, we could have been in a situation of going to shoot on 21st of March without a crew, without a star cast. And we were ready as crew members, four of us, to be inside the film as actors as well, but make sure that the film was complete. So there were a lot of challenges, I would say. So we kind of had to figure out our strategy, and that's what our strategy was. 21st of March was the day we had to do it, and we did it. Yes. And um, uh, you, you told me that um, already you edited the film and submitted to some festival? Yeah, so the film uh, was already complete. We finished the film in early June and there was an online festival which picked it up and it was already screened on an online festival, I think on the first week of June. 
so right now we are submitting it to other film festivals and there are many film festivals as you know who have got special categories of covid and who are also looking at you know uh, films that are dealing with that kind of subject so it's currently a submitted to more than two dozen festivals as you know festival circuit you need to push it out so right now it's all in the submissions and we hope to get some good feedback uh, how long is the film it's a short film 8 minutes eight it minutes. just deals with, yeah it deals with the situation in a very succinct way but the 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 key factor was that we wanted to make this film a little bit different mm -hmm. technically so we shot the film on super 8 mm we did it on 8 mm film we did not go digital we did not go shooting on that so they, we wanted to keep some special highlights of the film corona virus addressing the uh, situation of asian americans doing it creatively on a on a 8 mm film so we did do all these points uh, deliberately planning our strategy to be there we didn't want to keep it just like any other film so it has got some key usps of what we really wanted to focus on yes and in in the middle of everything of course the um uh, the events of uh, black lives matters also happened and you reacted as well well you know what happens is uh, not that united states is the only country which is so vocal and democratic in that way but there are a lot of uh this country is basically a country of immigrants to a higher extent so whatever happens any kind of incident happens people are very vocal about it and this situation of the black life matter that happened for the incident of the that happened that was the main incident that happened that sparked off the whole thing about george floyd yes. it did spark off a lot of anger in other people because every way people were pressured with the corona virus so what happens is it added more fuel to the fire when you are you are depressed when you are under lockdown sitting in there's no work and all this pressure builds it up so i think there are many other elements involved into the story that black lives matter had to come out so loud and aggressive it's not that is the first time that black lives matter has happened there are so many every day there's a story that happens sometimes it gets brushed away sometimes it brings gets brought to light but this was a combination of everything together and it had to be raised sometime i think people thought it was a good opportunity to bring it out loud and really put into a protest in a big way and i think people had a, no other option than listen to the voices and you have still even on the 4th of july two days ago you had protest of people wearing black and celebrating 4th of july so not really a celebration but the way you want to call it they were protesting in black outfits so i think not only black lives matter every life matters it's not that you are brown or you come from a particular community it was completely inhuman to do something like that so i am also a very strong supporter of being inhuman to people in terms of the actions so i think um, my next project i have been approached by somebody who is working on a subject of black lives matter so i think like i said i always get connected to stories which need to be told and this has just come again in my lap of working on a blm film so i think um, i would be telling my story in my own way projecting it out what the people really should get to know about it yes right it's not right or wrong it's all about how you want to say it. that's it yes and um right now i've been speaking to uh, several filmmakers uh, some in new york uh, and some in the europe and and uh, india as well uh? mm -hmm. uh, right now what is the situation i mean in new york uh, right now shops have started to open and people go to work again or is still uh... see it all depends on the kind of industry you belong to Yeah. you could be working as essentials you could be working as food people you know so you have restaurants and all serving food in terms of carry away because people need to you just can't sit down so there has to be different ways where people have to get back to working employment has to come somewhere or the other so you have the post working you have the essentials working you never had those walmarts and targets they never close the groceries never close so it's all there people are attending people are going shopping but people are very conscious about social distancing wearing a mask it's a compulsory wherever you go every place you have to wear a mask or you won't be served so or you won't be attended so that's important what happens is 
people have to be socially responsible you just cannot take it for granted because survival is important but you should know how to survive within the requirements you just can't go crazy there have been so many stories in the united states where people have gone crazy and taken undue advantage of getting those uh, flexibilities of opening up you have florida you have texas you have california people have just gone and done something wrong and they are coming back with the issue so you know it's you cannot just say it's not going to happen to me or it's going to happen to me i don't care it doesn't work like that it's not all about you it's all about the society it's all about the people around you it's all about the country you just can't be so self centered and say okay if i have to die i'll die it doesn't make sense so you have got all kinds of people who work and think differently but as far as the political um, situation is as well as the governments are concerned they have to have a balance of getting food on the table so somewhere there they have to start opening at different levels and they are doing a state by state on their own requirements and people are falling to it some places no some places yes but we hope that uh, slowly over a period of time it will start subsiding but it's not going to go this is not a immediate chapter that is going to shut down we have to consume it as a new way of life and we we'll live with it in a very sensible way yes and um, yourself um, um, do you consider doing uh, in the future a feature length film uh, i or my, my documentaries are feature documentaries i do not make short documentaries so i am used to making feature length films of 90 minutes something like that but if you're talking about fiction features i have been approached a couple of times to work on features and fiction but if i do it i would do again on a social impact story i would not make it into a thriller or an action or something like that it has to be addressed mm. to a subject matter that needs to be told i do have one or two subjects which i have in mind since the last couple of years but i think i'll take another year or two to actually get back into it yeah i mean not a bollywood mu- music <laughs> <laughs> no well i have to um, it will definitely be a crossover i'm thinking of doing not only shooting within the united states but also a crossover between united states and maybe asia it could be india it could be malaysia because see uh, i look at it from the perspective of the landscape and the opportunity that the film is going to get to be to the audiences so the advantage of doing a crossover film is that you get the best of both sides of the world you would get the western audience and you get the eastern audience now coming from india i do have a lot of connections there i do have a very strong foothold in that industry and i would some way or the other connect my story from india to the united states and make both sides of the world happy so that balance i will think of surely but not a, not a bollywood film for sure uh from my side and i wish you the best of luck in the upcoming months of course and uh i hope as well that uh, your recent films you know get a very good showcasing worldwide and uh i will share uh, your links uh, and so we can been networking with all the filmmakers and all the viewers of the channel uh, mr uh, vijay kumar mishandani thank you very much for joining us from new york and uh, i hope we can meet each other soon in one of uh, the screenings of your film soon definitely i would be uh, sharing my um, festival information to you as as it keeps progressing because recently one of my talent films have got has got an academy award qualification so yes. i am looking forward to that film doing pretty well because it's a foreign language film and it's got a good twist to the story so i would keep you posting on how it progresses as well as on the coronavirus film and hopefully we can catch up in some film festival of course thank you very much thank you my pleasure good luck have a good day have a good day bye bye